Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Kurt Frankenberg. I'm your host and the um, uh, the founder of Radioactive Trading. My co-host, uh, Mr. Mike Chepka, is joining me from the East Coast of the United States. Uh, say hello, Mike. Hello, everyone. It's uh, good to see you here. I'm the Director of Education over at Power Options. In addition to Kurt being the founder of Radioactive Trading, he, of course, is also the author of The Blueprint and a sought-after uh, seminar teacher and instructor. And he's taught at places such as, or lectured, I should say, at places such as MIT and other places on the East Coast and out in Colorado as well, and many online presentations, of course, to boot. <laughs> I guess it's been a few... A few presentations online, hasn't it, Mike? That's correct. Um, I think you've joined me for probably about 200 of these. <laughs> so, <laughs> a lot of fun. Okay. Well, Mike, uh, let's see. I, I thought that we would start today uh, instead of the way that we normally do. I thought that we would start on this landing page uh, that a lot of folks uh, come to when they first hear about radioactive trading. They might mm -hmm. have been... Uh, uh, searching through Google uh, or another search engine, uh, looking for a better way to do covered calls, for example, uh, and then come up with uh, with this page. And uh, Mike, I wanted to go ahead and, and uh, share this, uh, but then we're going to get into the money nets, uh, which are two of the income methods that uh, that we use here at Radioactive Trading. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, over here on the left, what we've got is a familiar hockey stick graph. This is the exact opposite of the risk graph that's described by a covered call. Uh, Mike, you, you care to elaborate? What, uh, what are we looking at exactly? Well, what we're looking at on this position is a long stock combined with a long put option as an insurance policy. We have a very limited risk, as we can tell by the elbow on this position. This would have been the 55 strike put option that we purchased on the stock. We have an right. unlimited upside profit potential and a very limited risk if the stock goes against us. In this case, only about 6% of the invested capital. Now, a covered call profit and loss chart will be flipped 180 degrees and then reversed. So we'd have a limited upside if the stock moves up as we expected, but we still take on 95, 96, 97% of our entire investment. We don't have protection on the downside. Now, over the long term, that's not really a wealth option, is it, Kurt? No. Uh, what happens is it becomes a sorting machine. Um, it'll sort out the stocks that you were bullish on in the first place and you turn out to be right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it, it'll sort those out of your account. For example, you buy, buy Amazon at 50 and it goes to 120. Uh, well, if you sever, uh, sold a covered call at the $50 strike, uh, you're going to be obligated to deliver that up. Um, on the other hand, you get to keep all the losers. You get to keep all the stocks that you thought were going to go up but didn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, more and more folks are, are finding out that uh, selling covered calls is uh, you know, a limited idea. I mean, it's certainly something that can work uh, in certain markets. But um, the appeal of the blueprint is, number one, that we start at a place uh, where the risk is is uh, already predefined. Okay, we we don't have that with the covered call trade, uh, or even straight stock or, or straight uh, you know only long calls. We don't mm -hmm. have um, we don't have a predetermined risk that's that's only single digit percent. Okay, uh, but with the Mary put we do. Uh, then uh, rather than just using covered calls, gosh, there's ten different ways. Uh, that we can take money out of a position like this without necessarily selling the stock. And so we begin uh, with uh, uh, a position where we buy stock and also buy a put option. We're, we've predefined our risk, but then by using the one or more of the 10 income methods, uh, we take it from low risk to no risk. And uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much <laughs> the radioactive trading method in a nutshell. Uh, but Mike, uh, I think probably folks tuned in for a little bit more than that. You, you think we should share the uh, the money nets today? Of course, um, but it's always important to talk about where we start. That all of the trades, all of the different adjustments we're going to mention during the rest of the presentation are based with having this foundation in place. We always have the long stock and the long put in place, whether it's the starting point on the graph over on the left here, where we start off with a 5-6% at risk, or if we've already adjusted it, with using some of the income methods, maybe three and four, and now have a bulletproof status where we can't lose, but we can still have the unlimited upside and can use the other income methods to generate more income, but we always keep the protection in place. 
Right. Uh, Mike, I'm going to go ahead and ask everybody on the line what, what, uh, what the involvement is right now with radioactive trading. Now, we obviously, everything that we're going to do today, we're going to give away uh, quite a bit of uh, learning material for free, uh, which is part of my charter. It's part of what I want to do um, with, uh, with this community, is teach folks more and more about how to, how to not lose. <laughs> Warren Buffett said that uh, uh, the first rule to investing is don't lose. Mm -hmm. And um, but then again, you know, how is that accomplished? Uh, well, uh, that's where we begin. And and uh, if you've picked up a free document uh, on RedactorTrading.com called the Sketch, uh, you're going to be able to get the uh, the foundation of how this uh, how this comes about. How starting off with rule number one: don't lose or don't lose too much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mike, we've got uh, uh, a significant number of folks that already own the blueprint. That's marvelous. I'm glad to see everybody back around. Uh, and uh, every week, you know, twice a week here on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we give away some free information. Some of it relates to the blueprint. Uh, uh, some of it relates to the original radioactive profit machine. And uh, some of it relates to the income methods. And some of it relates to the tools uh, that are available over on Power Options, where, where you work, Mike. Mm -hmm. uh, to help folks find uh, and, and use um, these kinds of positions. Okay, Mike, I'm going to go ahead and share the results. 46% uh, are using the free materials. I'm going to uh, suggest that if you haven't done it yet, you go to uh, the page that we're showing at radioactivetraining.com and listen to my first chapter of the blueprint. Uh, it's posted on there. Uh, pick up the sketch and uh, register to continue coming coming to some of these uh, free webinars. 54% Mike are thinking about buying the blueprint. Um, okay. That's why I can afford to do this for free. <laughs> so, uh, so that's a happy thing. And then 27% already on the blueprint. That's marvelous. Okay, uh, Mike. So here we are uh, in this in this situation where we buy the stock and also buy a put option. Mm -hmm. The put option uh, gives us insurance to where we can't get hurt. Okay. Now the next step is the income methods. And I'm going to say that um, uh, the income methods are all about using options the way they're supposed to be used, as a hedge, not as uh, a highly leveraged investment. And uh, <clears throat> I'd like to see what kind of experience our audience uh, is it has got right now with Options, okay. Uh, most folks uh, get introduced to options in what way, Mike? Well, usually with covered calls. Uh, there's a lot of uh, products out there, I should say, um, that tout how to make five to seven percent per month trading covered calls. And historically, if you've been trading options for more than two or three years, you've probably learned that that, in the long term, that's not always the case. You can generate income. But eventually that sorting machine aspect is going to kick in and you're going to find yourself with an account that might be down as much as 15, 20, 35 percent. Well, you're still generating income, but you're way behind the eight ball. Right. Um, Mike, I'm pleased to say that, uh, uh, that after uh, doing cover calls, I also uh, decided to learn some other strategies. Mm -hmm. And uh, while selling cover calls can be a good way to generate uh, a near-term income, um, and it's not a long-term uh, strategy, but knowing a lot of different setups uh, is definitely going to increase your chances here. Mike, we've got 81%. This is the highest result I have seen in recent times. 81% mm. uh, doing spread trades. Uh, so that, that's real exciting because income method number five and six are both uh, spread trades. And, uh, and that's what we're going to be sharing today, the, uh, the money nets. Shall we dive in? I think we're good. Yes, sir. Let's do that. Okay. Let me go ahead and hide that result. And uh, uh, let me pull up the money net. This is what I call a webinar short. We've got uh, several short presentations, like five or six minutes long, uh, that, uh, that uh, show one or another aspect of radioactive trading. And uh, every week we, we do you know, at least one of these shorts. Uh, I'm going to do a couple of different shorts today. Um, the secret of the tr the uh, money nets. Uh, number one, Mike, uh, every decision that we make with regard to uh, setting up 
a radioactive profit machine or with regard to um, making an adjustment, doing one or more of the INCA methods, mm -hmm. is based on the SEGA model. Okay, The C in SEGA stands for conditions. The conditions is what's going on. Okay, uh, it might be uh, it might include your cost basis for a stock. It might include wh where the market is right now. It might include how much of your account is sunk into this particular uh, issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, those are your conditions. Then after that, your expectations. Your expectations are the uh, what you can reasonably expect may happen. Now, uh, everything that we do is in light of this expectation. And all of that's subject to the conditions. But, uh, Mike, uh, is it a guarantee? I mean, if we expect something to happen, does it necessarily mean it's going to happen? No. Something that you had mentioned earlier is that uh, you know Warren Buffett always says, uh, don't lose. Well, can we control when we're going to win or when we're going to lose? No, we can't have control over that. So we can have an expectation, but as you mentioned, that doesn't mean it's going to pan out to our uh, desires there. That's right. However, we can uh, we can insulate ourselves. For example, we we take a position uh, that's going to do very well if it does well, right? If it does what we expect. Uh, mm -hmm. But then, on the other hand, if it doesn't do what we expect, we don't get hurt. And I think that's a really important piece of the puzzle. In fact, a little bit later on, we're going to find out how that's the most important piece of the puzzle. Okay, Mike. Every action that we take is in light of our goals. All right, and uh, uh, your goals may be may vary. Your goals may, may be different than mine. For example, Mike, I, I understand that your one of your goals is to to earn one to two percent per month. Is that correct? That's about a rough estimate. It's it's more along the lines of two to two and a half percent. But I know that uh, some months I might not generate uh, that amount. So I'm really really around one point five to two point five percent. That's my basic goal, Kurt. Got it. Okay. And every decision that you make either takes you closer to or further away from that goal, right? Very true. There are a lot of times when uh, someone will say, hey, Mike, I see you have a bulletproof position, but you haven't done anything with it in two months. So how are you generating the income? Well, it wasn't the right time to do an income method. I'm waiting to see something else based on the dictates and the blueprint where I might two months from now make a trade that generates 4 or 5% income, which still matches my goals. But just waiting, Kurt, and not doing anything sometimes is the right choice as well. That's right. Standing inside a trade is sometimes the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so your actions are always going to be in light of these three things. Uh, the conditions, you know, what's going on. The expectations, what you can reasonably, happen, uh, reasonably expect will happen next. And then uh, your goals, which uh, for you might be income, for me it might be growth. Mm -hmm. uh, for folks uh, on our line, uh, it, it might be anywhere in the spectrum between. You know, it might be a mixture of growth and income. Okay, so uh, all of those actions we want to be able to take in light of the first three, and Mike, we've got ten different ways to do it. Okay, ten different ways. So uh, let's uh, look at some ways to play the expectation of uh, of a stock going from ninety two to ninety four dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, if we were to play it with straight stock, if we were to play it with a covered call, or if we were to use the money net, and um, uh, first of all, uh, this is an actual uh, set of circumstances that, that I looked at a number of months ago when I put this together. I happen to be in the money net trade right now with Chipotle Mexican Grill, uh, but the stakes are a lot higher. <laughs> mm -hmm. Chipotle Mexican Grill is trading at around 163. At this time, it was trading at 92. Well, let's see. Uh, what if you were just wanting to um, play it by way of straight stock? What if you bought in at 92 okay. and your expectation is that it's going to go to 94 and so you set yourself a limit order to get out of the stock at 94? Well, what would happen? Uh, we'd make two bucks, mm -hmm. right? Mike, would we own the stock anymore? Well, I mean, if our goal was to sell it at 94, it hit $94 per share, we would close the stock or we had our stop set, and it's gone. We made our $2, right. that was our expectation, and we're done. Right, but that's what uh, fit our SEGA model. The, the condition was stock is at 92. The expectation is it's going to go to 94. The goal is I want to take a quick hit. You know, I want to get some money real quick and get in and get out. And so the action fit. Okay. But let's let's take another look at this. What if we were to do a covered call trade? And uh, looking at this table here, Mike, the 95s, the $95 call options, we're trading at this time at 330 by 360. 
Mm-hmm. Well, if it's uh, at 330 by 360, uh, would it be reasonable to say we could probably get filled selling a covered call at 340, say? Yeah, we could get a little bit between the bid and the ask. Sure thing. Sure. Okay. Uh, and so if our expectation turned out to be correct, okay, we would buy in at uh, $92. We'd sell the covered call at 340 uh, and uh, if the stock went to $94, why then, Mike, uh, what happens to the $95 short call? Well, it's going to expire worthless. It's still out of the money, so we don't have an obligation to deliver the shares of stock at 95 We hold the stock and keep our 340 Right. And what that's going to do is it's going to reduce our cost basis. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if we had bought the stock uh, straight up for $92, uh, now it's as though we only paid 88.60 but the stock is worth 94 so it's, it's kind of a sweet position and I understand why a lot of folks would like to sell covered calls because if uh, if the stock behaves according to your expectation it goes up it doesn't go up too much mm -hmm. well uh, that could be good because then we could sell that call again at, at, at an even higher strike or uh, uh, get more premium so uh, so that's a, an attractive proposition but I'm going to say that normally uh, with radioactive trading what we would do is we'd buy stock and a put and this covered call would reduce our stock base uh, our uh, our net cost basis okay taking us toward bulletproof well um, let's think about a different setup here Mike instead of doing the covered call instead of just playing the stock getting in and getting out let's look at a spread trade that would be done in the context of our ownership of the stock. Mm -hmm. Mike, uh, it's good to get $3.40 premium, but I could think of a way to get even more. What if we were to sell two calls against every 100 shares of stock? Then what? If you sold two calls at that price, now we have a problem. One of those calls would be covered by your 100 shares of stock, and another call would be naked, meaning you have an unlimited upside risk. Mm, okay, and that's uh, that's usually a bad thing, right? <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> having a hundred percent risk or better, you know, uh, or worse, I should say, having more at risk than you can possibly win is really not a good idea. And that's what you have with a naked call. To give you an example, Mike, uh, the stock was trading at ninety-two at this time. If I sh sold the ninety-five short and then saw Chipotle Mexican Grill go to its uh, current price of $163, that'd be a world of hurt, wouldn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, here's what we're going to do, Mike. We're not going to sell two calls. Well, we are going to sell two calls, but we're not going to just stop there, okay? If we were to also buy one $90 call, well, let's look at how that would set up, okay? We've got mm -hmm. uh, our, our income from selling two $95 calls uh, at three forty dollars apiece. We would have $6.80 premium in mm -hmm. and then use some of that premium to buy the $90 call. Now, Mike, do we have a, a net debit or a credit or what, what's our we're situation? Yeah, we're still going to receive a credit. Um, of one dollar for this transaction, we sold two, collected six eighty into our position, and we paid five eighty out to buy the ninety call to help cover uh, one of the short calls that you sold. Right. Now this is uh, I call it the money net. This is uh, the proper term is that it's a ratio call spread. But this ratio call spread is being done in the context of owning stock or owning a mm -hmm. married put. Okay, and so uh, what happens is uh, we collect a little bit of credit right now, and that does reduce the cost basis of our stock or of our Mary put, right? Yes, that's right. Okay, but what if the expectation turns out to be correct? What if the stock goes to 94? Well, what's going to happen to these $95 call options? Well, they're still going to expire worthless, aren't they, Kurt? Same as before. Yeah, same same as with the covered call. They're going to expire worthless, but the nine dollar call that we received at a credit, we actually received it at a credit, is going to be in the money by four dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, if the stock's at ninety-four and we've got the right to buy it at ninety, well we've got an in the money call. And uh it's it's here that we have caught the premium in the money net. Okay. Uh we would uh, have gotten a dollar for doing the trade in the first place and then pick up another $4. Now, Mike, if the stock had gone down below 90, everything expires worthless, right? 
That's exactly right. We would keep that $1 credit, and we still hold the stock. Right. So we'd be grateful for the $1 credit. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if the stock goes up above 95 well, uh, we're going to have to deliver our shares at 95 That's right. But but we're also going to have an in-the-money bull call spread that we got paid to own. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. We'd have uh, $5 premium caught in the money net that we got paid to own. We Normally when you do a bull call spread, you got to pay to do it. But in this case, we would have gotten paid. Pretty cool? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's one of the money nets. I like to call it, uh, uh, it's, it's the ratio call spread, and I like to call it the money net because uh, wherever that stock closes above the lower strike, we get to catch and ride that premium. Okay, in this case, if we were just buy uh, buy the stock and then sell it, we'd make two dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. if we were to do the cover call, we'd make three forty, and we'd also still have the stock. But with the money net, we would make five dollars, right? And yes. still own the stock. So that would capture what a dollar sixty more premium mm -hmm. than just a straight up covered call. Kind of cool. Okay, so that's uh, that's one of our money nets. Uh, Mike, uh, before we go on, I want to um, uh, ask a question or two about about our trading results. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go ahead and ask a, a question about our trading results, and then I'll prepare another slide here. Okay, so just over the last 12 months, whether you were a spread trader or whether you were trading covered calls or maybe you're doing long calls and long puts, speculating on the change in the market, would you say that you're happy with your trading results? Are you unhappy with your trading results? Or you kind of have some mixed emotions there. Maybe you saw some gains, but uh, in the end, you just have some mixed emotions. You're not really happy with your trading results. What do you think of your last 12 months? Okay, Mike, this is shaping up about the way that we normally see it. Okay. And uh, oh, it actually jumped up a little bit there. That's that's kind of good. When I say it jumped up, I mean the <laughs> yeses. <laughs> the yeses jumped up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna give everybody about another ten seconds to make sure that we get as much participation in this as possible. I'm going to mention that some of our polls are not just for Mike's and my benefit; they're for your benefit. Um, number one, uh, we get to. Uh, we get to guide the presentation uh, according to what it is that uh, that you're communicating to us that you need. Okay. Uh, number two, some of the questions are meant to be formed um, as a as a lesson. You know, like the like Socrates would teach. He would teach by asking questions. Okay. All right. So now, uh, Mike, I've got the results in. We've got 16% saying that yes, they're happy. Okay. With their trading results, that's uh, that's about right. I mean, that's about average. It's about what we see normally. Forty-four percent say no, not happy with my trading results, and forty percent say mixed emotions. So we've got roughly five times as many uh, people saying uh, I'm not happy with my trading results as uh, as we uh, hear there are. Um, I'm going to put that another way. Uh, sixteen percent are happy, and everybody mm -hmm. else is not. <laughs> is is that fair to say, Mike? Well, yes, and it's not to poke fun, and it's not anything like that. I mean, we, you, and I were familiar with mixed emotions as well. We saw some gains in the market, but because we didn't address risk first, and we suffered some losses that maybe wiped out those previous gains, we saw the opportunity to make money in the market, but we just didn't hold on to it. So we maybe have a little bit mixed emotions there. We're not happy with our trading results. And uh, both you and I are familiar with that, aren't we? That's right. Um, I'd like to take as many folks out of the uh, no category and out of the mixed emotions category, which is code for no, mm -hmm. okay, and, and put you in the yes category. And, and I think that that can happen. Um, I'm going to ask what single thing do you think needs to happen? What single thing do you think you need to be more successful at trading? And we are going to show the other money net. We're going to show income method number six. But uh, before I do, I'd like to ask the folks on the line, what do you think you need in order to be more successful at trading? If you could only pick one, for example, of the five things pictured, mm -hmm. and that was all you could pick, what do you think you should pick? 
This is interesting. Looks like nobody wants to spend any more time. <laughs> I'll give another three or four seconds here to make sure everybody's got a chance to uh, put in their, their two cents worth. Okay, and let me close and share the results. Look, you might, nobody wants to spend any more time uh, selecting stocks. Nobody wants to spend any more time trading. Well, that's, that's good, actually. That's encouraging uh, because I don't know if, if more time spent necessarily means more return on your investment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, certainly, you don't want to just throw darts at a board, you know, as far as picking your stocks, and certainly you don't want to uh, spend no time trading. Um, but a lot of times, if we spend too much on it, you know, there's that paralysis of analysis. Very true. Um, yeah, <laughs> where we either don't act because we spend too much time with it, or we make actions that are foolish. Um, but Mike, uh, let's see, 9% want a more reliable system for timing uh, trades. 15% uh, want to make wins bigger, and I think we just showed one way to do that, didn't we? Yes, we did. And how to increase it off a standard plain vanilla covered call using one of the money nets. Right. It was almost a 50% increase, uh, what do you call it, premium-wise. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, uh, we could only, with a covered call, could only have captured 340 in premium, but with that money net captured $5 in premium. Okay? Right. I'm getting ready to show something even more spectacular with income method number six. Uh, but uh, making your wins bigger is, is probably um, a desirable deal, right? But almost everybody, uh, almost everybody, more than three quarters of our audience here, Mike, recognizes the plain and simple truth that if we just limited our losses more, mm -hmm. geez, we'd have more to play with. And uh, when we do hit a winner, uh, we'd hit it with much more force, okay? Because we we've, we've We've got more capital to invest. Does that make sense? I understand, yes. Yeah, okay. So 76% uh, limit my losses more. We're, we're going to go into that right after this uh, uh, income method number six play that I'm going to show you, okay? All right. Mike, do you see uh, managing income method number six? Uh, yes, sir, I do. Okay, good. Um, you know what? Just before that, I'm going to go even simpler. I'm going to show the uh, the Marvel um, play, and then after that, we'll show the. No, no. You know what? Okay, sorry. Don't mean to be indecisive. I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to stick with what's out there, and then maybe we'll go to the Marvel play next. Okay. Okay. All right, Mike. Right here, we've got a classic uh, play on the uh, SWN RPM, and I chose this because. Uh, when I wrote the most recent version of the sketch, I've, I've put out seven or eight different sketches over the last, um, you know, nine years. Mm -hmm. But uh, the most recent version of the sketch contains this play, right? It shows the beginning of the Southwestern radioactive profit machine, okay? All right, so here we are in Southwestern. Uh, Mike picked up shares of Southwestern at 60.95. And at the same time, uh, April 09, $80 put options for $13. So uh, what does that make our total investment? Well, a total into the position would be seventy three ninety five, the cost of our stock per share and the cost of our put per contract. Right. Uh, actually, Mike, this is, a, uh, this is a misprint here. That should say $70, but I must have hit the wrong key, okay, because it's insured at $70, see? Okay, and so we have if, a $70 put. Got it. Right. So if I've bought a $70 put, okay, and I've invested seventy three ninety five, well, over the next uh, several months, um, I I can only lose three ninety three ninety five. Right. Mm -hmm. Just the, the difference. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see here. I want to send this to the next page here. All right. Now, just a couple of weeks later, I sold to open, Mike, uh, April $70 call for $3.90. Now, I want to think about this, okay? If the cost basis had been $73.95 for both the stock and the put, mm -hmm. okay, and we sold that April $70 call for $3.90, well, uh, how much uh, is the new cost basis? Well, the new cost basis is going to be reduced down to seventy dollars and five cents because we took in three ninety of premium, and our original cost basis was seventy three ninety five. That's right. Okay. Now I should mention that we still have that put option in place, 
at seventy dollars. And there's a misprint on the on the um, on the last screen. Uh, by memory, I know that this was a September seventy dollar put. Okay, so September seventy dollar put, but I'm selling the April calls. Okay, so my new at risk mount is a nickel out of this whole deal. And uh, Mike, what happens if the stock goes up past seventy dollars? I'd have to deliver the the stock for seventy dollars. That's right. So have I have I given myself a loss here then? Well, no, because you only had five cents of risk. You reduced your cost basis down to five cents. If you get assigned in April at seventy dollars, your right. put is still out to September. It's still probably going to have at least five cents of worth. So you have limited your upside. I'll be honest there, but um, you still are probably guaranteed a profit. You're essentially bulletproof because at April expiration, that put's still going to be worth something. You have about five cents at risk total. Right. That September seventy dollar put is going to be worth something. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, even if I do get assigned. Okay. So uh, that's the situation right here. Is I'm essentially bulletproof. Okay. Originally bought the stock and the put for seventy three ninety five total cost basis with a seventy dollar put. Okay. So three ninety five was at risk. Now that I've taken in three ninety income, I have uh, basically a nickel at risk. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially, I'm bulletproof. Okay, now this was on February 26th. Okay, and I've got I've got to not forget that I may have the obligation to deliver that stock at 70. Now, Mike, I haven't shown anything new to anybody. This is income method number one: selling a covered call. And most everybody knows about selling covered calls, right? Okay, but uh, what happened was uh, about a month later, um, this, the two things happened. Number one, time went by which decays the time value in that call, right? Mm -hmm. Another thing that happened is that the stock took a one-day hit. Southwestern was down uh, pretty hard on, on some, some kind of news event. I, I don't even remember what it was. But remember this April $70 call that I had uh, sold for three ninety. dollars Well, it was down to a dollar. Okay. So I bought it to close. Okay. Now, remember our cost basis had been adjusted to seventy oh five for both the stock and the put. I'm adding a dollar back in, okay, <clears throat> and so and that should say a dollar. Okay, sorry about the misprints there, guys. Uh, that should say one dollar. I added one dollar in, so my new cost base is seventy-one oh five. Okay. For the stock plus a seventy-dollar put option. Okay, so my at-risk amount is now a dollar five. Well, Mike, a dollar five out of seventy-one oh five is a pretty low risk, wouldn't you say? Oh yes, mm -hmm. we're still within our our reasonable range of less than five six percent on the position. We're well below that actually. Yeah, uh, right now it's about one and a half percent. Now, can you imagine trading a stock with a one and a half percent stop order? Well, I can't imagine doing that, Kurt. But I can also imagine every time I open a stock getting closed out within the next day or the next hour as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's part of a, a stock's normal fluctuation during the day is is one and a half two percent. So, uh, but I've got something better than the stop order here. I've got a seventy dollar put option, clear out to September. That uh, I'm I'm just uh, it's going to be really difficult to get hurt with this. Okay, so I was okay doing this. I was okay buying back the call, uh, but Mike, uh, this only was in place for a day. For one day, I had at risk this dollar and five cents. The following day, uh, I did the um, uh, income method number six, the money mm -hmm. now. Okay. Now, Mike, if I sell the May $70 call and buy the May $75 call, that's going to come up with a credit. What do we call that thing? Well, if I sell a 70 call and buy a higher strike call, we would refer to that as a bear call credit spread. And we had 81% uh, of our audience trading spread trades. So they're probably familiar with this vertical spread. Because we're selling a call at a lower strike that's closer to the current stock price, we're going to collect a higher premium than the option that we bought. So we're going to generate a credit into the position. Right. Now, uh, here's the really cool part, OK? Mike, when I do a bear call spread, what is normally the last thing I want to have happen? You don't want the stock to go up. The bear call spread is predicated on collecting the credit up front. And if I'm just in this position by itself, I need the stock, SWN, to remain below 70 so that both calls expire worthless and we keep that $1.25 credit. 
The last right. thing I want to have happen is the stock suddenly move up above $75 per share. Then I'm facing the mass maximum risk on this position, which would be about 375 So we want the stock to be bearish here, stay neutral, or drop in price with just this spread on by itself. Right. Okay. But uh, let's not forget that, that, that this is being done in the context of a stock that I own. Okay, mm -hmm. I own the stock. And normally, bear call spread, stock goes up, that's bad. But bear call spread and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, own stock and stock goes up, that's good. Now, in this particular case here, Mike, um, it, was, it was all good. <laughs> and I'll show you why, okay? Um, here's the deal, okay? I was able to take the net credit from the uh, uh, bear call spread, the $1.25, and apply that to the cost basis so far of my married put. So my cost basis of the married put at this point is 71.05. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I take the credit from the bear call spread, now it's $69.80 for stock and the put option. The put option being the $70 strike. Okay. So with the $70 strike, Mike, uh, on this uh, particular stock, is there any way that I can lose? No, you now have a guaranteed exit of 20 cents, a negative at risk, which is a guaranteed profit of 20 cents. Your position is bulletproof. Right. Now, if the stock goes up, and it goes up above 70, I am going to have an obligation to deliver the stock at 70. Mm -hmm. But that's okay, because I have a cost basis for the stock input of 69.80. Okay, remember I said stock and put. The put's going to still be worth something. But my net cost basis, because of income method number one and now income method number six, the bear call spread, mm -hmm. uh, I've 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 got uh, I've got no way to lose. Okay, uh, a negative at risk amount or being bulletproof. Now, let me tell you what happened next, Mike. The stock did go up. Okay, I did have an obligation to sell at seventy, but that's okay when I've got a net cost basis of sixty nine eighty. Okay. And then a week later, the stock goes up. So I sold a May $80 call. Now, wait a minute. What am I selling that, that $80 call against? Well, you still have the 75 long call on the position. Right. And it's like I've been paid to own that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it, it, it? It's like I've been paid to own it because I did a bear call spread, sold the 70, bought the 75. Well, that was done at a credit, and now I own the $75 call. As the stock went up, Mike, I was able to sell a $80 call against the 75 So I've created a bull call spread. Normally, when you do a bull call spread, do you have to pay to open it, or do you get paid? Yeah, when I open a, a bull call spread from scratch, I usually have to pay a debit because the call that I'm buying is at a lower strike price than the call that I'm selling. Right, but because it's done in the context of this radioactive profit machine, Mike, uh, I've received so far, I've received a uh, dollar twenty-five credit mm -hmm. to to own the seventy-five dollar call, yes. and I've received another two dollars and fifty cents credit by selling this eighty dollar call. Okay, and uh, Mike, have I added to my risk? Do I have risk now? No, you've lowered your risk even further by another two fifty because you collected the premium. Right. Okay. Now, here's here's why I like to um, talk about the money nets. Okay, because the money nets are usually done in two parts. First, there's placing the money net trade, you know, income method five or six, and then there's the management that happens afterwards. Mm -hmm. Mike, if I had just sold a covered call on March 25th, I could have gotten two dollars and seventy six cents. Right. That's right. Okay, but what's happened instead is um, uh, I've I've done a little bit better. Okay, <laughs> let's let's see how much better. Mm -hmm. First, I sold a bear call spread and took in a dollar twenty-five credit instead of the two seventy-six for for just selling a call. Then I got another two fifty for selling the eighty-dollar call against the seventy-five-dollar call. Right, mm -hmm. and these were all in May. So yes, uh huh. Uh, these are May calls. Um, these are done in April, but they're make calls. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, Mike, the the stock itself went up above eighty. 
Okay, so the radioactive profit machine expires. Uh, the two spreads close in the money. I have to deliver the stock at seventy dollars, right? That's right. Right, but if I, I've actually paid for that. You know, the stock itself was at a cost basis of uh, sixty nine eighty, and mm -hmm. I have to deliver it at seventy, so that's all right. But in the middle of the night on expiration Friday, here's what happens: in the middle of the night. I buy 100 shares of Southwestern at 75 and I immediately yes. sell them for $80 because of the bull call spread. Mm -hmm. So I'm collecting $5 uh, for that or $500. Okay. So here's the deal, Mike, a comparison. Either on March 25th I could have sold a covered call at 276 or mm -hmm. what I did do was income method number six, one of the money nets, and here's how I caught more premium in the money net. I got the dollar twenty five for doing the bear call spread, two fifty for adding another short call later on, and then five more dollars later on as everything closed in the money. Okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, is t is uh eight seventy five better than two seventy six, would you say? Absolutely. If at the end I still, you know, either way I still have to deliver my shares of stock at seventy dollars. But if I'm going to deliver my shares of stock at seventy dollars, I'd rather get eight seventy-five premium than two seventy-six premium. Okay, and uh, so that's that's one of the other money nets and one of the ways to manage a money net because uh, uh, the 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 dollars that we catch, uh, Mike, are are usually in the management. It's usually in what we do after we do the money. Okay. Now the final results for this uh, uh, Southwestern radioactive profit machine, with just 100 shares of stock, I, I, I made $1,200.51 after commissions. Okay, that's a 16.22% return in three months. But it's not the 16.22% return that I want people to look at. It's this. Okay, number one. At the very beginning, with the stock plus the put option, I had 5.34% at risk. Okay. Very, very small amount. Okay. Number two, the the reactor profit machine was bulletproof for most of the time. You know, remember, just a, a couple of weeks in, I sold the call, mm -hmm. made it bulletproof, and then um, a month later, I took it out of bulletproof status, but only by a little bit. You know, my risk was like 1.4%. And then the next day after that, I made it bulletproof again, right? That's right. All right. And then the final thing that I want folks to look at is the fact that because I knew more than just how to sell a covered call, uh, by using income method number six, I was able to capture $599 more credit. That's about half of what this uh, whole investment performed at. Okay, the fact that I use income method number six instead of just selling covered calls. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So uh, hopefully that that will uh, show folks that uh, there's more to this business, you know, than than just uh, buying a stock and insuring it and then selling calls against. You know, using the income methods, income method five and six, you can accomplish that one goal that uh, a lot of folks thought was important, and that was making the wins bigger. Okay. Well, already right. being in a limited risk position. That's right. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about limiting losses more. You see this number here, Mike? Uh, I only ever had 5.34% at risk, mm -hmm. and uh, then after that I was bulletproof. Yes. Okay. Well, let's, let's, let's ask this question, okay? Do you remember before when we asked folks how happy they were with their trading results? Right, and we had 16% say they were happy, 44% said no, and 40% said mixed emotions. So we essentially had 84% of our attendees saying, no, they're not happy over the last 12 months. Okay. Let's say that I gave you an eraser that you could use for, for your uh, ledgers, folks, and, and you could go back and whatever your losses were in, in each trade that was a losing trade, you could erase it and put in 6%. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. If we just had a time machine, we could go back and we could say, okay, I only had 6% loss in this, 6% loss in this. Would that change the results for the year? Would it change you from a no to a yes? Or maybe uh, if if you had been a no, would would it at least be less? Would would it bother you less? Okay. 
Mike, I had one fella uh, in a live presentation that I did in Colorado Springs. I had, I had one fella raise his hand and said, oh, to save $30,000. I said, wow, for the whole year? He says, no, in one trade. Mm. <laughs> in one trade, he would have saved $30,000 if he'd have been practicing this kind of money management. Mike, I'm going to go ahead and close the, uh, the uh, poll and share the results. Out of the folks that responded, not everybody had time to, but out of the folks that responded, 88% would have said, yes, I'm happy with my trading results. Is that better than 16%? And yes, we've we've totally the the results there have totally been flipped, haven't they, Kurt? Right. Uh, and and some folks that would have said no would have been at least closer to yes, which means they would have lost less. Or uh, Mike, uh, maybe the reason that they said that they weren't happy with the results is because you know they they didn't make as much mm. as what they should have. Maybe they didn't lose, but they didn't make as much as what they thought. Well, would you be closer to your goals? 12% say yes. Okay, 88% would have been happy with their trading results. 12% would have been happier. Mike, nobody that responded said uh, that they still would have said no. Mm -hmm. That's pretty revealing, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's do this. Let's go to um, the website again here, Mike. And uh, uh, why don't we use the free resources here and, and uh, point out a really important truth about trading. You know, we've got on this on this page here on the resources page at Radioactive Trading, we've got a free resource called the Trade Simulator Tool. Mm -hmm. And uh, do I click here to download it, or no, do I can, go to that page? You can do that, or you can go to the picture, uh, and it'll just pull up the page there for us. Okay. Oops. Okay, I see. There's uh, down here at the uh, bottom. There's a um, uh, there's a uh, kind of a guide on how to use the trade simulator tool. So, uh, folks, if you want to, you can log onto the site and do this yourself. Okay, but uh, what I'm going to do? We've got some default results here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or, or not default results, but default settings, okay? Uh, the target return, this is the return that you get if you win on a trade, if, if it follows your expectations, right? Uh, the, the loss percentage if you lose on the trade, and the probability of a loss. Now, you can change all of these, but let's just make it a coin toss and start with $10,000. Now, Mike, um, if we're right more often than we're wrong, we're going to probably do okay, right? Well, yeah, if I'm making 10%, if I flip a coin 100 times in a row, heads I make 10% of my starting basis and tails I lose 10%, I expect if I'm right more often than wrong, I'll make money. Right. Uh, let's come on over here. What this is, this is just a running total, and it includes commission, I believe. But um, uh, And if it doesn't, you can, oh, okay, you can make, make it include commissions. Okay, uh, but then we've got a, a typical trading record here. A couple of wins in a row, then a loss. A couple of wins, a couple of losses. A win, a couple more losses. You got, got the idea? And we have strings of winners and losers. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, with uh, 56 wins, 44 losses, we would have taken $10,000 up to $34,000, right? But also having a low value there of uh, 7700 Right, mm -hmm. and then finally doubling our money at the end. Well, that sounds pretty good, but Mike, uh, is it is it always a guaranteed? Is it always a given that we're going to win more often than we lose? No, we can't control how often we're going to win um, when we're using any methodology. It's based on what the stock's going to do, what stock we got into, and that's the tricky part. We don't know the future. That's right, Mike. It's not surprising to know that you can be right more often than wrong and still lose money. For example, Mike, let's say you're doing uh, spread trades, mm -hmm. okay, and four of them perform according to your expectation. Okay. But one, of, but one of them goes against your expectation. Is it possible that you could lose more on the one trade than you gained with the other four? It's very possible. For example, if uh, I'm looking at a standard bear call or bull put, if I want to be conservative, I might look for the position that has a high probability of success, maybe 80, 85 percent. And if I'm doing a five-point spread, I might be collecting 50 cents, but risking 450 if the stock goes against me. If I entered five trades, four of them worked out as I expected. Well, I keep the two dollars in premium, but then the other trade I lose 450. Where does that leave me? 
uh, in trouble. That's right. <laughs> but I was right. Essentially, 80% of the time, wasn't I, Kurt? Well, you'll always have that, Mike. <laughs> right? You'll always have that. Hey, I was right. Well, uh, not right enough. Well, uh, here's the other surprising truth, okay? The surprising truth is that you can actually be wrong more often than right and still make money. Uh, Mike, if, if we were to run this simulation again, okay, uh, and um, uh, get more losers than winners, or even just 50-50, see this here with the 50-50, okay, if, if we're losing 10% on our losing trades and making 10% on our winning trades, we'll take our $10,000 and convert into $6,000. That doesn't sound like a real winning streak. Mm, no. Okay? But let's do this, okay? Let's come on up here and let's just change the loss limit down to 6%. And let's actually go a little more modest on the return. We'll go 9% return. Now what? Oh, wait a minute, Mike. I don't understand. Look at this. We lost more often than we won and ended up outperforming that other uh, that other account. Okay, look at this. We get $29,000 from 10000 and we're picking losers more often than we're picking winners. Does that seem to make sense? Hmm. Not really, does it, Kurt? <laughs> it doesn't seem to make sense. Now, look, if we are right more often than we're wrong, if we limit our risks in the same way, we're going to do very, very well. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool there. Okay. Uh, but what I wanted to uh, emphasize to folks is that, uh, look, you can have more losers than winners and still do very well. Look at this. Really terrible trading record. Only 46 wins. Mm -hmm. Took $10,000 and uh, nearly doubled it. And uh, Mike, is there any real nail biters along the way here? No, not really. Um, we Our low value is equal to our starting point, isn't it, Kurt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's what I want to emphasize to folks is the beginning point. The beginning point needs to be it needs to be where you're keeping your losses low. We actually we didn't go for a higher return. We went for a lower return. We went for a more modest gain, and still ended up doing very well. Okay, Mike, I'm going to go ahead and put up my own my own uh, trading uh, mm -hmm. numbers. Where uh, over the last three years, I've demonstrated losing 4.1% uh, when I'm wrong, and making 8% or so when I'm right. Well, Mike, uh, over a long enough period of time, even if you have a lot more losers than winners, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to do okay. Okay, here I am with more losers than winners, uh, but coming out ahead. Not a real bad drawdown there either. No, it's not a not a nail biter. You're down uh, roughly maybe eight percent or so. About eight percent. Yep. Um, I'll tell you that I actually did hit uh, a, a level of being eight percent. And do you know where it was? It was November of 2008. Oh, yeah. I hit a, mm -hmm. I hit a low of having 92% of my original investment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, so Mike, that's, uh, that's this. Now, if, if you want to check out how to do this uh, yourself, you can just go to this page here uh, and uh, use the tutorial video. Um, Mike, what am I forgetting to share? We need to share some more things before we, uh, before we get... Okay. Have we had any questions come through that uh, that you think would be instructive for the whole audience? Well, earlier on in the presentation, Brian wanted to know about uh, you know what can he do if he already has significant losses on a position, um, let's say in the long direction or in the short direction. Uh, would these techniques help him if he's already suffered a loss on a long stock or on a short stock? Well, um, unfortunately, the, the, the most valuable part of radioactive trading is that you do it to begin with. The most valuable uh, thing that you can do with radioactive trading is to buy your insurance policy up front. Um, but, uh, Mike, can you uh, enhance your returns? I think so. I mean, by using income method number five, for example, a slight move up in the stock uh, is kind of multiplied. Mm-hmm. So it can be helpful. It can certainly be helpful to know all 10 income methods. Um, other questions? Oh, no, um, sorry, not really. Just uh, some general questions that came through more about uh, people who've already purchased the blueprint, for example, and things along those lines. Oh, good. Uh, the, for the folks that have already purchased the blueprint, 
Um, there's a special members only presentation that Mike and I did uh, Friday before last. And what it was is I discovered a new money management technique or a new uh, management technique for one of the income methods. It's income method number five. And so what I did uh, on that uh, webinar, what we did, Mike, was uh, to show the two management techniques that are already in the blueprint. And uh, for blueprint owners only, we, we also showed the third. And it was kind of cool. Mike, with, uh, uh, with the stock trading at 143.20, Mm -hmm. I sold, I, I bought 140s and sold two 145s, right? Okay. Now, with short 145s, would you expect that you'd have to pay a premium uh, if you decided later on that you wanted to keep the stock, if the stock went to 149 and a half? Oh, yeah. My obligation is to deliver shares of stock at 145, absolutely. Yeah, well, I actually got paid to hang on to the stock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so did did the money net trade uh, receive some premium up front for doing it, uh, and then I received some more premium for deciding that I wanted to keep the stock mm -hmm. when it hit me a six point gain, and, and that's that's bizarre. You know, I mean, if, if you were to just sell a covered call, mm -hmm. uh, it, you wouldn't expect to be able to do that. Um, you, you'd probably spend the real a premium to try and hang on to the stock, but in this case, I got paid to hang on to the stock. Kind of cool. Uh, so anyway, um, let's make sure that everybody knows about that. And if you haven't picked up the blueprint, guess what? Uh, if you do pick up the blueprint today, we'll we'll make sure that you get a copy of that video presentation. Okay, uh, Mike, I'm I'm showing the results here. Uh, it says 13% are putting a dollar amount uh, to. Uh, uh, to how much differently they would do by setting up their trades radioactively. Okay, 13% mm -hmm. would have saved at least uh, $300. Nobody said, I don't get it. Nobody said, well, I, I don't see how forcing yourself not to lose too much could even help. You know, everybody got that. 20% um, would be ahead by 1000 to nearly $5,000, and 67%, the lion's share, more than two-thirds, Mike, mm -hmm. would have saved or made $5,000 or more last year. Okay. They'd have been practicing the uh, money management methods in the blueprint. So that's um, that's pretty uh, revealing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Let's take a look here, Mike. I'm going to ask something. Uh, why does Kurt give away so much for free? <laughs> we did. <laughs> I didn't think we had that poll still in there. I haven't run that poll more than once before. Um, why does Kurt give away so much for free? Today we gave away uh, the information of how to do the, uh, both money nets mm -hmm. and, uh, and at least one uh, management technique. Oh, how nice. Nobody says I'm a lousy businessman. <laughs> at least not yet. <laughs> okay. Let me go ahead and close that. I, I know folks are still uh, answering, but that one's just funny. That's just, just a lark there. 37% um, say all of the above, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, Mike, uh, do folks appreciate it? I think so. We've had a number of, of uh, people write in with their success stories, and uh, uh, a lot of folks have uh, even paid for the blueprint before buying the blueprint, you know, just, just using the things that we've shown them on the free webinars. Remember that fellow from New York that made the $900 and... Mm -hmm. Wrote in and, and said, uh, "Well, geez, you know, this is pretty cool." Uh, <clears throat> am I a lousy businessman? I don't know. I think if you give away uh, things, uh, people understand that what you have is has got value. Um, you can afford to. Lots more where that came from. Well, guess what? That's true. We've got lots and lots of stuff in the blueprint. And uh, yeah, I, I'd like for everyone to be successful with more than just uh, you know. Um, sticks and rocks, you know, the, we've got some pretty sophisticated deals uh, that, that we can do, some maneuvering that we can do with the stuff in the blueprint. So mm -hmm. uh, let me do our final poll here, Mike. Uh, what, uh, what do we want to know more about? That middle question, uh, I want to get in on a special webinar tomorrow. Uh, that's out already passed, but we do have a link for folks that own the blueprint. So for owners of record or for people that pick it up today, 
uh, we can make sure that we can get you into that special webinar. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, a lot of interest in coaching. More than I expected. <clears throat> is this a, this isn't single answer, is it? You can answer more than one. Yes, sir. That is correct. Okay. Great, Mike. Let me go ahead and close this uh, poll. And that's this is actually more for our internal use, so that we know you know what people want, and need, and so we can supply it. Uh, but uh, looks like uh, more than a third want to know more about the blueprints and uh, want to get in on that special webinar. Uh, so, so that's going to be available here. If you go on uh, radioactivetrading.com, okay, go over to the products page, and this is where you pick up the blueprint. Okay. Um, also, uh, free resources that I've, I've talked about already. I already spoke about the uh, trade simulator tool. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Mike, something that I really want to plug, and, and that uh, you'll you'll have a chance to um, to show. Uh, on Thursday uh, is the um, the tools for finding these kinds of trades and managing and uh, those tools are available on power options now power options I, I don't own power options uh, in fact uh, power options have been around a lot longer than I have uh, as far as uh, teaching folks how to how to trade mm -hmm. but um, but the power options platform is the best that I've seen as far as it comes to uh, searching for and identifying the best trades, not just radioactive trades, but also, isn't it, uh, do you support like 23 strategies? Yeah, so over 23 different strategies, the credit spreads, debit spreads, patented search engines to identify only those spreads that match your criteria. And uh, what an important question just came in from Tony is, uh, you know, will the power uh -huh. options tools show you when to use what income methods and the projected results? Well, if I'm tracking an RPM in my portfolio, I can link to a position analysis screen that will give me a breakdown of potential income methods based on the dictates of the blueprint, and then I can simulate that trade and see what my risk reward would be. Now, it doesn't tell you what is the best income method because everyone has their own definition of what is the best income method. Right? It might be based on if you're looking for income, if you're looking for growth, for example. Um, right. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. It's going to be de dependent on your SEGA model, and everybody's SEGA model is different. Everybody has different conditions. You know, you have a different amount to invest than I do. Uh, you have uh, different expectations, different types of, of uh, issues that you like to invest in. Mm -hmm. So we're going to want uh, those to fit, and I think the most sophisticated tool for finding and for managing uh, radioactive trades is the the power options. Uh, platform, mm -hmm. uh, Mike. I just sent a link to everybody uh, saying, "Hey, try this out." Because if you if you uh, go to um, redactortrain.com, or if you just click on the link that I sent you, mm -hmm. okay, you get a two free week trial at Power Options. And um, if afterwards you decide that you want to uh, continue with Power Options. Uh, then uh, at that point, at then you would supply your credit card information, not before. Uh, and uh, at that point, um, they'll give you another two free weeks. So it's like mm -hmm. getting a free month if you click on this link. Kurt, a, uh, another important question just came in. Uh, you might want to go back to the products page for this, but Charles wanted to know, did you describe what's in the blueprint? I had to step away for a moment. Oh my goodness! Okay, well, what the blueprint entails? Uh, first of all, Mike, uh, Mike the uh, the sketch, which is available for free here mm -hmm. on RadioactiveTrading.com, the sketch is kind of a mini blueprint. It's I think nine pages long or something. Nine and pages. It shows, right? yeah, it shows how to set up a trade that would be insured and protect you for like five or seven or twelve months uh, at a you know six percent risk or so. Mm -hmm. And one of the income methods. Okay, now the blueprint tells you all the whys, the wherefores, the things to look out for, the stuff that I've learned over the last nine years trading this way. Um, it uh, talks about what I've what I've learned by networking with other radioactive traders all around the world, and the ten income methods that we've developed and when to use them and why and when to not use them and why not. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's not nine pages, it's 250 pages 
Um, you don't have to read all 250 pages to start making money, do you, Mike? I mean, mm -mm. Uh, within the first uh, chapters, you know, you're going to be seeing some principles and so forth that's going to greatly increase your chances for success in trading, and certainly. Uh, Stop the hemorrhaging if you're making bad choices, if you're getting into uh, plays that are going to hurt you. Uh, the blueprint will stop that right away. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then of course, there's not just the 10 income methods, but what we call the SEGA model for, for choosing the correct income method and timing that fits you and your particular trading temperament and, and uh, the capital that you've got to trade and your goals. So... Was that a, that a, a succinct but uh, complete answer there, Mike? I think that was succinct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Well, hey, we're getting towards the end here. Uh, normally, we, we like to stay on the line just a few minutes past the hour and, uh, and answer any questions. Do we have any other questions, or, or uh, uh, would anybody like to add anything? Um, uh, yeah, just uh, let me just... Roll through here again. Um, I was just answering another question for Tony. He wanted to know: Is the eight percent profit per trade, or is it annualized um, for your portfolio? Then Tony, that eight percent we showed when Kurt was walking through the um, trade simulator tool. I apologize. Uh, that's when he's right. He averages about a seven to eight percent gain. I think it's eight percent gain. But when he loses, he only loses four percent. So that's for each trade. And it looks like um, Bill has just uh, posted something you might want to read there. Uh, your friend Bill just came in, the very last one. Oh, uh, just mentioned. It just mentions that you know he's been following us for a while. He's really uh, impressed. He thinks you're very smart, not a lousy businessman. Um, he's not using the <laughs> money nets now, just rolling puts. Um, you know, and that with his his technique that he mentioned uh, the other day, that he'd be willing to uh, do a small presentation for other blueprint owners on how he's trading the radioactive trading technique. Oh yes, okay, uh, Bill. We're we're gonna uh, definitely do that. I'm gonna need to maybe talk with you uh, and prepare some slides uh, based on the the things that you've told me. Uh, uh, Bill has done very well with uh, income method number four, Mike, uh -huh. uh, which which involves having no short calls. There's no uh, short calls involved at all, uh -huh. but uh, but it takes takes you from a position of having risk to having no risk or even less than no risk. You can, mm -hmm. you can be guaranteed a return at a certain point uh, depending on what the stock does. Uh, but uh, Bill, I'd, I'd like to maybe talk with you and, uh, and we'll do that. We'll put together something. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe we'll even put together something free you know, for, for the whole game for, for anybody that wants to come. And of course what's interesting is that I use income method number four a lot in my account as well but on completely yeah. different stocks that's Bill using Bill is using with similar results. Not That's as high of a right. return, but I get bulletproof a lot with income method number four using completely different stocks. That's right. You use more conservative types of, uh, you'll, you'll uh, get dividend yielding and solid uh, stocks. Mm -hmm. and Bill more plays uh, bio. Tips. That's right. Uh, and, uh, and you both are doing very well. You mm -hmm. know, it's completely different types of stocks, but it's... Uh, uh, it's the same precept of limiting risk on the front end and then making yourself bulletproof. That's right. Pretty cool. Okay, yeah, thanks, Bill. Bill just supplied his cell to me. Uh, that's that's private, isn't it, Mike? I mean, no, not everybody can read his. Only we can. Him. That's right, Kurt. Only we can. Okay, good. Uh, Bill, I will definitely give you a call. Okay, super. All right, Mike. Well, let's go ahead and, and uh, show her up. I would like to thank everybody for coming. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, uh, you all had the opportunity to, to learn a couple of fun things. We had a lot of credit spread traders, or not credit spread, but spread traders, mm -hmm. uh, Mike, online today, and uh, uh, hopefully they've seen a really good context, for example, how to do a bear call spread with zero risk, right? or, or how to do a bull call spread at a credit, mm. <laughs> <laughs> or, or how to uh, use a ratio call spread and add no risk, but uh, to uh, actually be paid to have the opportunity to take more income than a cover call could. Absolutely. You know, so, yeah. So, so those are all uh, fine things I think for credits uh, for spread traders to learn, mm -hmm. and uh, and we give it away free. So, uh, hopefully, uh, folks, uh, you'll you'll uh, see the sense in in picking up the blueprint and getting all ten. And uh, Mike, thanks for coming. And on uh, Thursday, do you think we can use the uh, the radioactive? Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, 
PowerOptions tools and uh, maybe uh, get into a stock, we can do that live. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. Of course we could. Great. Okay. Well, I'll see you on Thursday. All right. Sounds great, Kurt. <laughs> all right. See you all out there, folks. Uh, happy trading. Bye for now.